Okay, welcome everybody here on YouTube. Wait, here on Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later on. There we go. Uh, for our next deck, which is going to be Gruel Frenzy. So this is an update to um, what we tried before uh, RNA came out with playing an Experimental Frenzy deck uh, where we have Wayward Swordtooth, where we can play lots of lands um, each turn and just kind of really snowball through with Frenzy and gain a whole lot of mana by playing multiple lands a turn. And with all that extra mana, we have uh, Skargon Hellkite's ability to use. We have Fight with Fires to kick. We can have cast a big Electro Dominance. Um, which Electro Dominance in particular, this may be a card that like we kind of look at and maybe should be like a four of, honestly. Uh, because the problem with Experimental Frenzy, of course, is that you put you get cards in your hand, and you can't cast those cards in your hand. But Electro Dominance allows us to cast that card in our hand, right? So like that's actually kind of cool. The problem with Electro Dominance, though, and the problem with like the X spells in general, is you don't get to really control when the X spells like this, or basically by X spells I mean like this or Bane Fire, you don't get to control when they'll be on the top of your library. Like you can you can play like you know a couple things in the turn, and then suddenly Electro Dominance shows up on top of your library, and you don't really have enough mana to to use it anymore. The good part about Electro Dominance, though, as opposed to Bane Fire, in that respect is that it is an instant so you can untap and on your upkeep before you draw it like if it's sitting on top of your library you can still cast it then um so that's something uh to kind of look at like this this may be a card that may surprise you know like this is a card that i'm pretty intrigued about here and we'll kind of see how it plays out it may play out where we want to start playing more copies of that card um yeah, and then then you have like map that that's a good point. You have map that like draws you extra cards, but you know if you're drawing extra cards when you have frenzy, you don't really need extra cards in your hand because you can't do anything with them. But you can kind of think of it like map is resetting the top of your library when you draw that card um, as like something also. Uh, That's a good question. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It says you can't play cards from your hand, but then it says you may cast a card from your hand without paying its mana cost. I would think so, but may maybe you just can't even do that. Maybe you can't even play the card from your hand, even though Electro Dominance says. So maybe this is maybe this is just not going to work at all. Maybe I'd. Maybe this is just a complete non-bow. Uh, Steamkin. Steamkin would like go in like the Incubation Druid slot, and I honestly don't know if Steamkin's going to be better than Incubation Druid for us. I, I honestly don't think so. I think that Druid getting like ramping us right away and getting like the Experimental Frenzy down as early as possible is really what we want to be doing. Yeah, it's worth it's worth a test, right? Like we might as well try it out, and and who knows? Maybe it'll backfire. Uh, maybe it'll bane fire on us uh, besides that we got like cinder vines for the the nexus decks we got harpooners for blue um you know cannonade for like tokens carnage tire for control got a decent uh selection of sideboard stuff we have some field of ruins to re to reset our top of our library um yeah let's go with it well the Map's not really an anti-synergy with Frenzy. The only part that's an anti-synergy is whenever, if you're cracking cracking something to draw, but before that, like whenever a map is scrying, uh, the scrying is very good with Frenzy, and you basically just kind of treat the uh, drawing a card as a scry. You basically just treat, treat it as that, like you're getting a card off the top of your library to help play other stuff. Playing a card means playing that card as a land or casting that card as a spell, whichever is appropriate. Right. Um, so that's what I don't. Yeah. So I know that I know that the how Frenzy says you can't play cards, and the other one says cast. I know that the casting is playing. I don't know if the electro dominance, like, I don't know if it like vetoes the. The Frenzy. 
just don't really know how those cards interact with each other. Uh, if it doesn't interact, you know, because like one says you may cast and the other one says you may not cast. So it's like, which can you do? Because you're you're like casting a card when you're not supposed to, but then you're also like not able to cast a card when you're not supposed to. So I, I don't really know, honestly. So we'll, we'll just kind of see how it plays out. I, c I can see it being either way, honestly. I could see that the with the Cant, with Frenzy, um, and I, I would put it's probably more likely that the Frenzy says how you can't play it, that you're just not able to do it. I think it's more likely that that's the case. But I could also see the case um, where it does let you play it because it's like a, it's like a special card letting you play it. So I don't know. We'll kind of see what happens. So I'm going to play the Phoenix here over just over Lava Coiling, because I think that the Lava Coiling does use my mana, or like the Phoenix uses my mana better, and we can kind of save the other coil uh, to kind of see what our opponent plays this turn. But yeah, it looks like they they are like the Mardu Aristocrats kind of deck, Mardu Aggro kind of deck, and the Rekindling Phoenix is going to be difficult for our opponent, likely. Okay, and I need to make a thumbnail for Mardu Aristocrats also. Go. Do I have this in download? Yeah, thumbnails. Aw. Do I want to coil the Fireblade Artist? Might as well. I like fight with fire to kill like the next thing. I'm just doing this basically so we get to attack with for nine here. Being able to attack with land war off also. Um Mardu. There we go. Hey, good job, Mass. Got a rare land from an ICR. Awesome. That's a good good pull there. All right, so Cannonade feels like that's probably going to be a card we're going to want. So maybe I just take out the two dominances for two Cannonades and a Fight with Fire for a Cannonade. Cannonade's probably going to be a pretty good card. Cannonade is kind of awkward, though, with the druids and elves and stuff that we're doing over here. Yeah, we need more rekindling phoenixes. <laughs> uh, I didn't see any spicy decks that necessarily uh, from the Mythic Championship. Um, I, haven't, I didn't see any. There, there definitely could have been something I missed. Uh, it seemed like just kind of normal. Normal stock decks. Uh, from what I saw, but I could have certainly missed something. mid-range from Seth. Oh, man. Hmm. This cannonade to go along with the elf druid is just not a good combination for me.
Um, Seth, la last Pro Tour, Seth uh, had a, a different take on green white mid range of Slesnia mid range. Also, that's pre pretty interesting that he's got a Demir mid range deck. I don't. Without seeing the Demir mid range list, I'd be hard pressed to think of a Demir mid range list that's, you know, favored against Sultai. Ooh. I was going to frenzy here, but obviously we drew the Rekindling Phoenix, so let's just go and play that one first. Um, in this deck, we have 25 lands in here. Hmm. Oh, that's going to kill Lana Warelf, though. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, Zareth. Yeah, go ahead. I know we don't get to play a land off the top, like if there is a land off the top by playing the land from hand, which there is a land on top. Um, but I think that just, um, I think it's the best, when you're playing Experimental Frenzy in a deck like this, I, I do think it's the best to play the land from your hand uh, first because um, you do want as many lands as possible when you're playing Experimental Frenzy, one. And then two, if it is a land on top, um, you know that you're just drawing a land for turn, which is not going to be a dead card. Or sorry, which is which is basically a dead card anyway, like in your hand. Um, so it's that's a good card to draw for turn. You know, like you want to be drawing lands. You don't really want to be drawing like Rekindling Phoenix as the key cast. You want to be drawing lands that you don't want to do anything with anyway. So it's not it's not a bad card to uh, to put in your hand afterwards. draw that one. I like the the cheap interaction that Seth has with like the number of like duresses. I, I do think duress is a good main deck spell. Um, I do like having three duresses in the main deck. Fight again. But yeah if this deck gets behind it's not catching up. Kind of thing. Okay. The, the Demir deck does this does look pretty cool. I like I like the Demir deck, but I I'd be hard pressed for this deck being Soul Tide. Um, but I could kind of see it beating the rest of the decks, like the rest of the metagame, 
Um, I think it could be just fine against control and mono blue and see it um, yourself. You know, like I the other see. parts of the meta game. I, I think Sultai would be a, he a real big problem, but I don't. If you if you can have a good a good chance of beating basically everything else, that's not so bad. Having like one bad matchup, even if it's the most popular matchup. And this is what Hulkite can do. Obviously that's subtle. And I just played into that. That's alright. We're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, Mass, you called it. Yeah, not really punished that much, though. I mean, we just have a whole lot more mana still. And Experimental Frenzy is just kind of ridiculous. We still need you. Alright, I'm going to... Yeah, we'll, we'll draw the Llanowar Elf because we don't really care about that one. All right, so main, we get to cast this. Play that. Play this. Play this. Turns out when you have like infinite mana, you're doing good. Hey, Morphs with that Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the stream, Morphs. Thank you so much for that support there. Um, this is kind of a an unfortunate spot for the Hellkite. Um, I do like that Hellkite. So this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to destroy the Frenzy. I want to play that Hellkite next turn. I'm gonna play this land and play this land war elf, or should I scry and keep on top here? I think I'll just play this land war elf. I, I don't want so that's the thing. I don't want map to change it. I want to I want to draw that hellkite next turn because hellkite can just mow them down. You just draw hellkite and activate it three times and just kill them. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't play Hellkite this turn. Yeah, I only had four mana. I couldn't play the Hellkite. GG. Experimental Frenzy is nuts. Especially with Wayward Sword Tooth. Aw, thanks so much, Morphs. Great guy, nice streamer. Hit that follow button. Aw, thanks, Morphs. Yeah, we have Electro Dominance in here, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we get a Frenzy out and have an Electro Dominance in play, and we get to try it. We're thinking it's not gonna work, but who knows? Maybe it will. Hey, Hooday, how you been, Tyler? You been playing any any Magic? And if so, what decks are you playing these days? All right, so we got turn three, Rekindling Phoenix. Exactly what we want. Ooh, that thing is pretty scary. I'll just play the Phoenix here because it uses my mana better. I mean, maybe I should just Sword Tooth and Coil because, you know, Sword Tooth, I get to play the extra land and then Coil that thing. Vindicator is quite scary. Uh, Boros Locket, on the other hand, 
Not very scary. Oh yeah, I was making this. Mardu Aristocrats. All right, back over here. Uh, getting ready for the Hunter Burden. Okay, is what format's the Hunter Burden this year? Is it standard? And if so, what deck are you thinking about playing? Too scared of that card. I don't know, it is a 3 3 double strike, I suppose. Maybe I should be scared of that card. Yeah, it's probably just unnecessary to attack with a druid. I should just act. I probably should just adapt the druid and just sit back. Cause yeah, just that that draw step means I get to start kicking fight with fire. Alright, that was a bad attack. You know, just kinda playing against like these like the draft deck, you know, and just kinda played a little poorly. So we're at eight permanents now. Yeah, these are all comms except for that one Swift Blade Vindicator. Almost a popper deck. I know, poor opponent. They're trying over here with these commons and I'm just fighting with fire. Ah, it's modern, okay. Soul is a good choice. That deck's really good. All right, gonna keep the main deck the same. Fire Cannonade would probably be just fine if they're playing all those uh, three three mana two two haste duders. I'm just gonna keep it like this. Well, if we blow up their their gate like during combat to give their creature to make their creature not have double strike anymore and get some kind of blowout effect with that yeah um if you want to just learn all about the game um I, this course that i'm linking here uh in in the chat is a great uh resource to use um called Level 1. The full course is written in, uh, it looks like the end of 2015, so it's, you know, it's a little old, but it still holds up. Uh, it's written by one of the greats in the game, uh, Reed Duke, who just made the uh, top eight of the Pro Tour this weekend. So yes, that's a really good resource to um, to kind of read through to, to help learn the game. 
course, you can also, you know, search for Magic Arena here and download the program for free. And there's a tutorial in the program as well. Um, yeah, but that's a little, little smaller in nature, of course, with it being a, just a tutorial in a game. Oh, you haven't played Modern Months? Dang, I haven't either. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be tough. Yep, Arena is free to play. Uh, to start, you know, like, you don't actually have to ever spend money, but just getting, like, the best cards and stuff, if you want to do it a whole lot faster, you can spend money to, to buy packs and everything, but you don't, you don't ever have to spend money on it. There's nothing that requires money. Well, there are events and things, but... It's not like you can you can only unlock part of the game by spending money kind of thing. Um, Alright, let's get more mana. Coil this Vindicator thing. That's the scariest card they have. Oh, Vraska! I didn't even I didn't even see that. Did that pop up on screen? I didn't even see that notification. Sorry. Let me see if I can get that notification to pop up on screen again since I missed it. There we go. Nebraska with the sub. That's sub number eight on the day. Thanks so much for that uh, being sub there for the second month. I really do appreciate that. Thanks, Nebraska. All right. 20 gems, 50 gold, added to the collection, and Gruel Frenzy is 2-0. Oh. GG's. Alright, let's update this, 2-0. Oh. Let's try it out. We have our, our combo of Frenzy and Electrodominance in hand that we don't know exactly how the combo will play out. So we'll see if we get there or not. Looks like we may not get there. I kind of want to just coil this. That's a good, good call, Grap. Dominance does need to get to, does need to be the top card for it to be part of the combo anyway. Because with, with when we have frenzy in play, we won't be able to play the dominant. So yeah, so having them both in our hand doesn't matter. Still in my main phase? So 
So I can dominance and coil here. I can do I could I could dominance plus coil and kill both of these. The the thing I'm worried about of using dominance plus coil here is that if our if our opponent has the the tempest gin, tempest gin could be a huge problem for us. That's that's like the the thing I'm worried about. Um, I think I'm gonna save dominance, and I'm just gonna play sword tooth and coil one of these. I guess it'll be the herald. Saving the electro dominance because it's because it's uh, instant speed, but of course it would not be that good against a tempest gen right now anyway, unless we draw land. Let's get the frenzy in play. Or we can start rifling through our library and start getting so many, uh, be able to start playing multiple cards a turn and everything. It's going to be, it's going to put a whole lot of pressure on our opponents. Our, our opponent's like four mana, presumably. Hopefully. This Terramander is going to kill us kind of quickly, though. I'm finishing up. Ooh, I almost missed that. Right, finishing up that thumbnail for the Mardu Aristocrats. Um... Perfect. All right, that video is published. Um, <laughs> I almost did forget to adapt. Ooh, didn't really expect that to resolve. It is pretty unfortunate that we don't get to Don't get to use our Field of Ruin at all with their all basic island deck. If I attack with this druid, I don't get to adapt the other druid. That's probably fine, though. 
Eight's a lot of damage. Gotta pressure their life total. Yeah, Sword Tooth with Experimental Frenzy is a really fun combo. And they stack up. If you have two Sword Tooths in play, you get to play three lands a turn. Uh, and so on. Oh, did I still have five mana to adapt the other Druid? Oh, right. I had four plus uh, the Druid. The Druid was not summoning sick. The land of worlds were. My B. Um, all right. All these Harpooners come on in. I don't think I like Cannonade too much in this matchup. Cannonade doesn't kill Storm Tamer. It only kills, a, you know, it does kill a couple of their creatures. Um, but you know, they get a curious, a couple of curious obsessions on something, put a counter on something with like the essence capture. <laughs> All right, we're bringing in the harpooners. What are we cutting? I guess it's just going to be Electro Dominance. Kind of like always. Treasure map is pretty slow here. And while Fire with Fire is easy to counter, it does kind of require it to get countered. So I like this here. Um, yeah, we can force out like a counter spell with the dominance. Let's just let's just play those over the maps. We'll just play no treasure map. Yeah, dominance probably isn't necessary in the deck. Um, as we've been talking about it, it seems like it's probably a non bow with frenzy, and that's my B. So I like how I do like how it's instant speed though against the blue deck, like how you can do it on their end step. Um, I do like that. All right, no curious obsession. That's good. And I know Kral Harpooner is like my best card to play here, but because of Essence Capture, I don't really want to play. Harpooner with them having two mana up. I kind of want to wait for them to have just one mana up before I play Harpooner. Um, I don't know what I'd rather have instead of Dominance, honestly. Deck. Well, we got punished for, like, the Lava Coil line has turned out to be the, the incorrect line for what our opponent had in hand for them having a Trickster and then chart a course. Wish I would have played the Harpooner first. Our deck's not helping us out here. Yeah, Ooze is certainly an option. Um, yeah, there's just tons of options uh, things to play. I mean, anything from Biogenic Ooze to Gruul Spellbreaker to, you know, just uh, some other removal. Kind of be playing anything. I've been kinda I've been happy with this the Skargan Hellkite. I can see playing more of those. Yeah, Rhythm of the Wild would work in the deck. I'm not a big fan of that card overall, but it would work in this deck.
Yeah, when we played the two harpooners, we were definitely lucky that um, that they had uh, Wizard's Retort to counter the first harpooner and not um, and not Essence Capture because Essence Capture would have made their Trickster a four four, and I would not have been able to trade for it with the harpooner. Good news for us, though, is they have eight lands, which is not what Mono Blue wants at all. They've had eight lands. They have only two cards in hand. Um, I've been kind of waiting to see if I can play this around a counter spell or something, because we haven't had very much pressure pressure on us where like I need to like play the frenzy. Um, and yeah, them having all these lands means that they have at most two counter spells in their hand, which is good for us. So they have another trickster. Oh, they just have to just have a dive down. They just wanted to use a dive down with that. Wow. Huh. Hmm. I don't even think I want to. I don't even want to cast the fire with fire in my hand right now. I can just keep it. We ha we're at like the point where you know, like we have a lot of mana. Um, if like they play something that we need to, like an actual thing we need to fight with fire, such as Tempest Gin, we can just uh, we can just pop the frenzy if need be. Frenzies. Nice. Alright, that's probably enough cards for that turn. We just played three lands and four creatures. <laughs> that is, it's very OP. <laughs> That is absurd. All right, three and zero, Gruel Frenzy, doing its thing. Experimental Frenzy. When you get to play multiple lands off the top, turns out it's pretty good. Turns out it's pretty good. Uh, I already, I already played three lands. I couldn't play that that land anymore. So that's why I didn't. We couldn't play that card, that land. You, you know, usually only you only get one land drop, but we had two sword twos that gave us two extra land drops. Perfect. Swordtooth, Frenzy, Phoenix. These are the cards in our deck. I like them, especially the Frenzy. We could certainly, uh, could certainly get ran over by a quick hand with this. <laughs> so I'm yeah. I open packs uh, every five subscribers. So. Uh, when we get two more subs, we'll be cracking open another pack. Um, I mostly build decks on my own. Uh, you know, so, like, we also have, like, donation decks that I play. But then besides that, I'm usually building decks on my own. Sometimes I'll look at other deck lists for ideas. That's the thing that happens at times. Um... A lot of times I just kind of put together cards that I want to play. Like, like this deck here is just a deck I built. Um, but, you know, we built this last format. Um, 
Block. Thank you. Before we had Stomping Ground. They shocked the O2 after blockers. They could have just... They could have just shocked the O2 before blockers. And then dealt the damage to me. So this this list, uh, so basically what I was saying is I just updated it from what we had before. But last time we played a lot of dinosaurs, like there was Ripjaw Raptors and Regisaur Alpha and Carnage Tyrant in the deck. And I just took out the dinosaurs for like Rekindling Phoenix. Um, so five, six, seven. So we are three permanents away from unlocking Sword Tooth. One permanent away. I'm gonna just sit back with the Phoenix here. I don't think we need to attack with it. What? So they're what? They had Mountain Mountain and Sovereign's Bite went on the stack. Huh. Alright, so they're red black burn. Yeah, with yeah, with Frenzy you, yeah, you can only play one one land a turn with Frenzy in play and everything. But Sword Tooth lets you play an extra land. So that that's why we have this combination. This lets you so so that says you may play an additional land. So this lets us play a second. And then you know when we had two sword tooths out we could play a third. Um Yeah, it's still in beta. <laughs> I feel like that's like just something that they can kind of hide hide behind, you know, a shield that you can't really, you know, you can't really do too much about where they're like, well, it's still beta. And you're like, I, I guess, yeah. I guess this is beta. It'd be the, like, I don't know what the difference would be if this wasn't beta or was beta. Like, it's the same thing. Like, they're having like these, you know, big ranked things for like huge mythic championship tournaments and everything. But you know, with like whatever bug, they can just—they just have this force field, of, hey, it's beta, it's beta. Yeah, I guess so. Like that's—that must be a new thing of cast a card and then concede to show the card to the opponent. That must be a new thing. I—I I don't think I've—I don't think I've ever seen that before, of that right there. But maybe nobody's ever done that. No, it's, yeah, it's not a bad business model. It's a pretty good business model to have like that—that that force field. Of, of uh, you know, like if, if anything, if there's any problems. Okay, let's draw some lands. Good, good. And our poor, our poor opponent. They just keep on having these one landers. So having the more green sources then uh, allows us to play Llanowar Elf and Incubation Druid to accelerate our deck. The one land man. All right, four and zero. Oh. Four and zero. Oh. That five win dream still alive, but. We have the final boss. Here we go. It's game five of the finals. Mono blue versus Esper. Who do you think will take it? I like. I think mono blue is favored against Esper. In general, uh, so I guess that would be my pick. All right, here we go. Final boss time. Yeah, and we have it. Yeah, we have a continue. We have an extra life. So even if we, uh, even if we lose this uh, first match, we have an extra life.
Mulligan. Well, this is our keep. Um, Experimental Frenzy can, of course, get us a whole lot of extra cards, so love it. Love the acceleration. That'll get us a Frenzy the a turn earlier. Yeah, is this our third time to play Modern Blue in this league? No, maybe our second in this league. I think we played it twice with Aristocrats and now twice with Frenzy. Mono Blue has certainly been the most popular deck. Um, I don't really want Phoenix to get Essence captured. Let's just go with the Fight with Fire. I don't really care for a Spell Pierce or Dive Down. Those are fine. Yeah, Mono Blue is looking like the most popular deck in Arena these days. That's unfortunate. Our opponent had a Curious Obsession and they also had the Essence Capture. Not going good for us. Want to play around Spell Pierce, which is why we're playing like yeah, I'm waiting until we have six mana before we play this Frenzy, because of Spell Pierce. And I'm not going to attack with Land of War Elves, because of Trickster. So I, I do think Mono Blue is a good deck and and everything and, and I, I do think it's a you know so I'm not I want to preface this by saying that I'm not trying to insult Mono Blue or anything but I think Mono Blue is the type of deck that's a lot easier to it's a lot easier to build decks to beat Mono Blue than it is to build a deck to beat Sultai uh, for example and so with Mono Blue becoming the number, like if Mono Blue becomes like the most popular deck, it's not difficult to build decks to beat Mono Blue. Um, and you know, you have you can have like cyborg cards that are very good against Mono Blue, kind of thing. Um, Good hand. Yeah, Wanda Vertebrae is too weak, yeah. Ooh, not Daredevil. Alright, let's bring in all these Harpooners. Um, cut the treasure maps for the Harpooners. That's all we did last time. I didn't do anything else. I think that's all I want to do again. You know, of course, we get. You can help out your like mono blue matchup with this deck by adding in more one mana removal spells. And honestly, maybe that's what those electric, those two electro dominants. Maybe they should be uh, fiery or shiv and fire. Like, oh, um, especially if electro dominance does not work with experimental frenzy, which we haven't 
quite seen yet. Um, uh, Shiv and Fire could be a good card to use there. So Treasure Map helps you find Experimental Frenzy, uh, which you know, like our our deck is of course built around. So it helps you find helps you find Frenzy. Um, it also uh, whenever you have a frenzy in play, you get to do this, use the scrying to reset the top of your library if you hit like too many lands in a row, kind of thing. Um, and it also gives you a whole lot more mana whenever you transform it. Uh, it gets you an extra land and the treasure, so you can use the use all that mana to cast more spells on the top. It, it's a card that works pretty well with uh, with frenzy. You're welcome. I would uh, Carnage Tyrant comes in against Esper Control, uh, against the control decks uh, like Grixis Control also uh, against those kind of decks. That's where we're putting in. Um, That's where we're putting that in to play. Please don't have Curious Obsession. Come on. All right, that's good. That means they're not going to be able to counter Hellkite. Perfect. Um. Which, of course, Hellkite is awesome here. Yeah, and that's that's pretty that's like common. That's basically every Pro Tour weekend. Whatever deck uh, does really well to Pro Tour, you just see a ton of, um, you know, like that day. So it's, um, yeah, with having three in the top eight here, and Hellkite's gonna take it home. Did it? Did it end up winning? So it, it's. I know it's favored in the finals. The last I heard that it was the finals against Esper against Blue. All right, we got to win game three, though. Yeah, Arclight. Yeah, Arclight's going to make a return, it looks like, isn't it? It's not very good, but it's it's fast. I like how, how fast our hand is with these land war elves. Uh, mono blue just one, okay. Hey Sly, welcome back to the stream. Thank you so much for that uh, sub there, Sly. Really do appreciate that. Sub number nine on the day. Um. And K Nub also getting in there. Thanks, K Nub. As Kanta?
Um, so that's so K Nub makes it sub number ten on the day. So that means we're cracking a pack open after this. After this match. Um, ah, oh, thanks K Nub. Uh, Sly asked no more twelve hour stream goal. Yeah, I I'm just taking it out for right now. Um, because like with the last couple of days of me not streaming stuff, I've lost like a, a ton and a ton of subscribers and stuff. And so it's just a, a number that's a very long, far away. So I'm just kind of waiting. I'm going to just take that off for now. Hmm. Yep, that's yeah. It's real normal with the Twitch Prime subs and gift, and especially the gifted subs. A lot of my, you know, I've had like just lots of uh, gifted subs and everything. And so yeah, it's it's certainly normal. Just a number that fluctuates quite a bit. Hey, Punk Boy RD, welcome to the channel. Um. It did resolve pretty quickly. Yeah, so, yep, if, yeah, so for using your Twitch Prime, it's just, it's a one time thing each month, and then so then. Uh, after a month, you have to renew it yourself. It doesn't. It does not renew automatically. Um, water knot. So that's why. That's why that number can fluct. That's one of the reasons why that number fluctuates so much. So at deep freeze, you can still have like a creature that blocks and everything. And I guess that water not makes you not have a, you know, you can't block or anything with with that card. Oh right, Field of Ruin actually does something. I can actually Field of Ruin that as Kanta. That's true, I can actually do something with the Field of Ruin. Alright, well I like seeing Chart of Course. One, two, three, four, five. So it costs three mana to grow this Terramander. They're just passing back to me. And Electro Dominance gonna finish it off. Uh, uh. There we go. 
5-0 for Frenzy. Beating Mono Blue a couple of times. And we beat a couple janky decks also. And there we go. Thanks, Jelly. Thanks for the the 5-0 hype cheers. GG's. All right, and we got a bunch of gems. Whole bunch of gems. Um, two of those were against Mono Blue out of those five. We played against Mono Blue twice. Uh, having the four har Harpooners, of course, definitely helped in the sideboard. Um, and then, you know, like we have like our, our flyers here that we're, we're good at blocking. Uh, Hellkite won us the game one of just kind of being patient and waiting for Hel like being able to resolve Hellkite. Um, and that's that's like the what's really good about incubation druid you know like when we had five mana game one there we were able to just um activate incubation druid uh and be able to add a whole lot more mana so it's hard for mono blue to um be able to counter multiple things in a turn that was the only time we actually cast electro dominance was that very last turn of the last game of the last match uh, this card probably doesn't need to be in there, um, but who knows? <laughs> hey, thanks, Lord. Um, thank you so much. Um, yeah, right. That'd be nice to save that extra life for the for the next run. But this deck was pretty fun. Um, it felt pretty good. Like rekindling Phoenix was awesome. Um, yeah, Frenzy worked really well with Sword Tooth and everything. And yeah, this is this is a pretty sweet deck here. Um, just splash you to fairies. <laughs> yeah, so that's a that's a cool deck. All right, let's crack open a pack. You know, we got to our next sub goal of getting to ten, so we're cracking a pack open. We already got all the rares from the set, so we're hoping to get a mythic. Hopefully, not a rare, because a rare is only twenty gems. Bleh, we just got a rare. So, adding twenty more gems there. Um. Yeah, this could be certainly be a de deck that I'll play again soon. I'll, I think I'm going to play this deck tomorrow again because um, we got a 12-hour stream, 12-hour uh, stream tomorrow from 11 to 11, and so I think that'll be one that we'll play there. Um, all right, so that's Gruel Frenzy. So if you're watching this later on on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, and thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.